Welcome, welcome, Hawk fans, to another episode of Hawk Talk. I am your host, Colin Cole, and today's episode, we are joined with our obvious guest host. Let's call him a guest host. My co-host, uh, three-year starter at right tackle, two-year um, all Big Ten, all conference selection, and the keen offensive mind, and it's going to bring you the stats. Uh, David Porter, David, join, help me, help me. Ah. David, thank you for joining the show today. <laughs> Dude, my pleasure. It's always a fun to be here. And, uh, you know, I always have a, a lot of fun being here with you. Well, David, um, yeah. Oh, wow. um, uh-huh. Iowa okay. took on the University of Michigan on October 1st, 2022. Um it was definitely not the outcome that the Hawkeyes were looking for. However, it is the outcome they received. Uh, 27 to 14, uh, handing the Hawks their second loss of the season, uh, first loss in Big Ten play. And it was definitely a game that was, um, I would have to say, it was a game where I would have to say that um, nah, it was tough for all three phases. Um the Michigan Wolverine team came into Kinnick and they came in on a mission. They definitely look like a team that is uh, focused on uh, some goals that they have for their season. And they came out that first drive of the game and looked very well, punched, punched the Hawks in the mouth, punched that Hawkeye defense in the mouth and got the first rushing touchdown of the season scored on them by uh, the receiver, Ronnie Bell on an end around. And it was it was a tough battle all day, really. Uh, the Michigan offense controlled controlled the uh, the line of scrimmage and controlled the tempo of the game. Pretty much did pretty much what they wanted to do, David. But uh, it was it wasn't all a loss in terms of what we saw on the field. Uh, this is this being now the fifth game of the season of the regular season for these Hawkeyes. Uh, we've seen, I think, some growth on the offensive side. And uh, I would have to say that this was definitely the toughest opponent that they faced this year. And I would have to say that these guys came in with the, with the tenacity and, 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 uh, and a focus from the opening snap, the opening drive, the opening kickoff return. Uh, those guys came off and, and, and did some things. So let's jump into it, David. Um, I'll let you jump yeah. in fast, man. These, these guys, uh, JJ McCarthy <laughs> had a great, had a great day. Um, Blake Corum had uh, 29 carries for 133 yards and a touchdown. Um, but I'll let you jump into it, man. These, these, it, was a, it was a stellar day for that Michigan offense. Yeah, that Michigan offense, like you said, they came out early in the game. I mean, basically from the beginning, they were ready to go. That first drive, 11 plays, 75 yards, eight of five minutes on the clock. And we got, they ended up in a touchdown, the first rushing touchdown of uh, that Hawk defense gave up all year long. Um, it wouldn't be the last of this game. Uh, then we went through a series of punts. You know, the Hawks had the ball. They went three and out. That's uh, deflating there a little bit. The offense kind of got uh, sputtered to get going. Uh, Michigan got, got the ball back after a, a stellar punt by uh, Tory Taylor. And then uh, they went eight plays, 25 yards. Again, they're just grinding away, grinding away. They punted the ball. Uh, you know, Michigan punted the ball away. Then we went back out and actually got got going a little bit, which is actually nice. Seven plays, forty nine yards, but then ended up in a punt again, and you know that that again, not horrible. Um, great, got the ball away, wasn't a turnover. But then Michigan went down the field again, and, and we're in the beginning of the second quarter. When they started driving. Uh, they had thirteen plays, fifty four yards, seven minutes off the clock. They just grinded it out. That offensive line was just eating us up. They really were. Uh, they were half a step ahead of our defense with a, in a, pretty much all the plays. And they ended up with a field goal then. Iowa, we get the ball back. Seven plays, 15 yards. And we're punting. Then Michigan gets the ball. And they drive with 12 plays, 61 yards. And they get a field goal. They're playing ugly, fundamental. Uh, just grind it out football, which is what we're used to seeing on our side, right? They kind of flipped the script on us. Their defense took away the run, made us one-dimensional where we're passing the ball. 
our defense couldn't quite stop the run. I believe Michigan had 44, no, 77 yards rushing in the first quarter alone. Um, they ended up with, uh, what do we got here? They ended up with quite a few yards rushing. My goodness, well, 172 yards rushing. Uh, and I, I believe that's the most we've given up all year long. So, into the half, we're down uh, 13 to zero. We haven't scored yet. You know, the offense actually didn't score until the the fourth the fourth quarter. They were, they were driving in the third, and then the um, got a third quarter in it. Went into the fourth, and then we got in early in the fourth quarter. We got four, 14 points in the fourth quarter, made the game seem a little closer than what it was. But by the time we got then, uh, the game was well on hand. Michigan was already up 20-0. to zero. Uh, They put another rushing touchdown in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, the cherry topper making it 27-14. Uh, kind of the game was they did exactly what we do to other teams, right? The Blake Corum, 29 for 133. J.J. McCarthy, 18 of 24 for 155. One touchdown. You look at Spencer, his numbers were actually weren't that horrible. Uh, 21 of 31 for uh, 246 yards and a touchdown. I mean, by far his best game of the season. And it came against you know, a pretty, pretty staunch defense over there. Where we really uh, <laughs> struggled was in our rush game. Our running game, we had a total of 35 yards running the ball. And I'm not sure what the combination was, but, you know, we from the outset of the game, you could tell. I mean, we were there for our 20-year reunion. Uh, but you could tell in the stadium the, the energy once Michigan went down and scored the uh, that first touchdown in the first quarter. That took a lot of energy out of the, out of the stadium. And then it just kept grinding. That those two field goals in the second quarter really just kind of just deflated the the, the stadium a little bit, and that's where we got to like coming to the second second half. They came out and they really they hit us again. So we um, we didn't play horribly. We didn't have the energy. I think the the tell of the tape was really the offensive line play. I mean, look at the two, the difference between the two. Um, they were able to protect the quarterback. We gave, They gave one, one sack, very few pressures. I think there was like one or two QB hurries. We gave up four sacks, and three of those sacks came really at a horrible time for us. And uh, at one time we saw the defensive end line up, I think it was a, an 11 technique. Maybe it was over the slot receiver. But he got home on that one. He did a nice little dip and rip and got home. And I did that twice. Uh, Spencer was under a tremendous amount of pressure. So, yeah, we are uh, – we're getting better. That offensive line is still young. The uh, – Spencer is looking to feel a little more – looking to be a little more comfortable in that in that position as a, at the quarterback there. But uh, still, a lot of room for opportunity or opportunity for growth. Hmm. No question about that statement. A lot of opportunity for growth. Um, yeah. Looking at it, uh, snapshot, J.J. McCarthy currently on the season, 848 yards total, cool. six total touchdowns, no interceptions. Spencer Petrus, 770 yards total, two touchdown passes, two interceptions. Um, Blake Corum, Michigan's leading rusher, 93 carries, uh, 611 total yards, 10 total touchdowns. Caleb Johnson. I was leading rusher, 41 total total carries, 206 total yards, and three total touchdowns. So the production is is coming along. Um, we know that this is a long season, and this is one of the top caliber opponents in this the, in this conference. And this, I believe, is their seventh or eighth straight. No, it's definitely their, their fifth, obviously, of the season. Um, I, and so you got to give them the fifth straight because they lost their last game in, in the bowl game or in the playoffs against Georgia. But uh, but this Michigan Wolverine team, uh, number four ranked in the nation, is definitely a, if we look at this past game, is, is definitely, um, they, they definitely have the inside track to winning the Big Ten. Uh, obviously, 
their annual matchup against Ohio State Buckeyes will determine a lot. But, uh, man, what I saw out there on that field, they have uh, playmakers at all levels. You mentioned some of the stuff that we saw, particularly from their defense. Uh, when we talk about what uh, what our offensive line was able to do, we saw a couple of times that uh, they, they – yeah, they, they kind of um, forced, if I can break it down a little bit, forced our offensive tackles into a position of – where it's really is super difficult to have to really mirror uh, a guy who's so wide and coming at you at such a sharp angle. Um, but uh, then to have to deal with the power, of course, it's, it, you know, it's when teams know that you have to pass and defensive linemen can kind of put themselves in a position where they can pin their ears back, kind of just get ready with the, with all the pass rush moves that they have. Uh, it really makes it difficult for offensive line. That's it's particularly for our guys. You know, this is an offense that is predicated off of running the football and then taking advantage of a team's uh, secondary by forcing them to play with an eighth man in the box, kind of forcing uh, additional defenders into the box to take care of the run so that the passing lanes and those receivers get more one-on-one opportunities. So, it really goes hand in hand. And, you know, we talk about it all the time in terms of playing complimentary football. We've talked about it in terms of, you know, uh, a team having three legs in terms of the offensive, defensive, and special teams leg. Uh, but when it comes down to it, man, everybody, it, it, there's those aspects of it, but there's also individual battles that have to be won. Uh, what did you see in the game on Saturday that made the that um, did you feel like at least we know the outcome. We know that uh, the two touchdowns in the, in the fourth quarter didn't really do justice to what this game really looked like. Um, but did you see promise? Did you see fight in this team? Do you feel like uh, some of these young guys are, are coming along and growing uh, as it pertains to facing one of the top team, top teams, not only in the Big Ten Conference, but in the country? You know, um, the guys fought. I believe it did. But you could just see it at the end. They were talking about over – I can't say they, they gave up. You could see the defense was tired. All right. Uh, this defense has been taking a lot of plays, and it's not like it's just this season. But this defense is fairly well intact from what it was last year. They're, that's why they're so good. Um, these guys have taken a lot of uh, a lot of plays starting last season. Beginning of this year, they took a lot of plays. You know, as we get going, this bye week is really going to help. But as you get going into the season, there's just only so much time that you have to recover. And that's really what's been uh, hampering uh, this defense right now. Uh, they get out there, they're a, little, they're a little tired. The season has already been long. They've taken on a lot of, um, a lot of time on that field. Even this past game, uh, Michigan has really, uh, they dominated the time of possession too. They had the majority of time uh, with the ball. That means our defense is on the field, and we all know that's a, that is that's really the thing that's holding this team uh, and scoring for this team. I believe the stat is they've actually outscored our, our offense since the bye week of last year. I believe that's what it is. And maybe some of the special teams and the defense combined. But uh, in any event, these guys are taking a lot of hits, and they, I think it's just all starting to add up to where they're um, – there's only so much they can do. You know, the offense, they showed out there. They went out there and they started to perform well come the fourth quarter. But they still started slow. Um, yeah, really slow. There is, there. is, I'm going to say yes, there is some glimmer of hope and that uh, Spencer, but he performed well. I mean, 21 of 31 for 246. And one touchdown, you know, the the run game and the offense as a whole, though, just kind of sputtered, sputtered along. Yeah. What do you see? Well, I would have to agree. Um, some of the stuff that we talked about in the pregame in terms of Spencer getting to the top of his drop and getting the ball out of his hands, we saw some of that. Um, we yeah. saw that especially in the deep ball to, uh, to Lachey. I saw that over the middle. Uh, the, the the pass to uh, Regani on the sideline where he almost scored, I, I felt like there were those times when Spencer was decisive and he 
he got I saw him sometimes get into a second and third read and before he decided what he was going to do in terms of getting out of the pocket. But that's the maturism that you have to have as a quarterback to be able to, especially if you're a pocket quarterback, which this young man is definitely a traditional pocket passing type of quarterback. Um, he has to be able to go through those progressions in terms of what receivers he's going to throw the ball to pretty quickly. And <clears throat> in this game against Michigan, I feel like he was getting through those progressions quickly. Obviously, they have a star-studded defense. You know, they have four guys up front that really have a, do a tremendous job of getting after the passer. And then um, the secondary did just enough, uh, obviously, getting after him, but also um, making it a difficult – making those windows really difficult to get into. So, you know, <clears throat> this was a tough one uh, because – <clears throat> because this Hawkeye team uh, has a lot of talent. And if nothing else we've seen throughout this season, they have a lot of tenacity as well. It is it's, it's tough. And that's one thing, last thing we're going to touch on is morale for this group, right? Because um, if you if you look at this whole thing overall, bro, um, it's not going to be an easy road whatsoever for these guys, you know? Uh, next week, they, they travel to Champaign this upcoming Saturday, the, October 8th. Then they have a bye week that following week, and then they got to go to the horseshoe. Um, and then from there, it's, there's no easy dubs, man. I mean, they, they welcome in Northwestern, who is, who is doing a tremendous job. Let me not skip over the fact that Illinois just really dominated Wisconsin over this past weekend. Uh, so that's not going to be – Brett Bielema has that that, uh, that Illini team really running right now. So that's not going to be something that you can just circle and say, oh, that's, that's you know, like years past. This, this, should, be a, this should be a dub. It's going to be a tough Wisconsin game. Just, yeah. Wisconsin just fired their head coach too. So, you know, that, that fired makes... their head coach, Paul Chris. Yeah. It's true as well. Paul Chris is gone. Paul Chris is out of there. That's out of there. Um, so yeah. then they, then uh, they they got Northwestern at home on the 29th, and then they traveled to Purdue November 5th. Wisconsin, oh, wow. like we just mentioned, the following week, and then they're at Minnesota the 19th, who is playing, who is number one in the in this division on this side, and is playing lights out football right now, and then finish up with Nebraska um, on November 25th. So, dude, this is uh this is not a cakewalk. Uh, schedule for these guys at three and sitting at three and two, um, it's going to be a difficult task to amount to amass at least three to four more bowl, four more games to get themselves bowl eligible. Uh, that's not a guarantee throughout the rest of the season. But if anybody can rally the troops, Kirk Ferris can rally the troops and continuing to work on this offense, continuing to uh, to <clears throat> to play through their strengths. I mean, we saw fourteen points get put up against the number four team in the country. We got to continue to build off of that, and defense has to go back, and uh, you know, go back to the drawing board. Let's let's get uh, let's get this thing back rolling. Uh, we know what kind of group we have here, and uh, yeah. got to get them on and off the field. That's the biggest thing, on and off the field. All three phases did not did not perform their best against Michigan October first. However, they can bounce back this week uh, in prime time fashion. Seven thirty p.m. game in Champaign, Illinois against. Those fighting Illini. So that'll be exciting. We'll bring the pregame to you later on this week. And, uh, you know, thank you guys for joining us for what was a difficult, difficult show, all things considered. But uh, we had a great time this weekend. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, the 20 year reunion of that uh, 2002 class, getting the opportunity to see a bunch of our guys was tremendous. And uh, thankfully, um, you know, we had a great time. And, you know, all of us old guys, I believe, got home. Nobody got arrested. Nobody got in any fights or anything. So I think we're good. I think it's all good. But, uh, you know, thank God for for uh, the fact that we were able to come together and enjoy that time. And, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, tremendous for that fact. So with that, I want to go ahead and call this a show. Uh, I'm Colin Cole. And for my partner in crime, David Porter, we really appreciate you guys joining us. And uh, stay tuned. Go ahead and make sure that you click the follow button in the, on the YouTube page and all that good stuff and, you know, show some support. So till next time, I'm Colin Cole. I appreciate you. God bless and go Hawks. Oh, oh, let me not forget my boy David Porter. He's going to say the same thing. But God bless. Go Hawks. Go Hawks.